All set. Mm -hmm. Good evening, everyone. We will start the meeting by asking our city clerk to read the quote of the week. Thank you. Whenever you do something, act as if the whole world is watching. Thank you very much. Call the 21st regular meeting of the Common Council of Order. Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Boren? Here. Bauk? Here. Decker? Here. Gisha? Here. Hannah? Here. Heidemann? Here. Kittleson? Here. Clayunis? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Ryan? Here. Surik? Excuse. Vanderweel? Excuse. For Hasselt? Here. And Wangaman? Here. 14 present. Quorum is present. <clears throat> this time I'd ask Alderman Decker to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Decker. Approval of the minutes, President Hunt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion and second to approve minutes under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes stand approved. Mayor's appointments. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. To the Government Structure Committee, all their persons Heidemann, Rinfleisch, and Vanderweel. Michael Ipam, Michael Vandersteen, John Hill, and Gerald Jones, signed by the mayor. There's a note here that somebody wishes to spend. Is that uh, what the wishes are? Or otherwise it lies over? I don't. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I would make a motion to suspend the rule and approve the appointments. Second. Is there any objection? Alderman Rinfleisch. No objection. I wasn't aware that there was a note there, but I was going to ask for suspension. We do intend to meet already on this Wednesday, so we would need to have a suspension in order to do so. Thank you. Welcome. There is no objection to suspension. I need a motion to confirm the appointments. So moved. Motion and second. Any discussion on the appointments? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Appointments are confirmed. Tom Brickley to be considered for appointment to the Business Improvement District to fill the unexpired term of Richard Grinke, whose term expires 9-10-2010, signed by the mayor. This lies over. Angela Payne to be appointed as Director of Human Resources and Labor Relations, commencing February 16, 2009, and expiring February 15, 2014. This lies over. I will have a, a bullet point uh, description of her qualifications, educational background, and all that. If anybody wishes to see any more detail, I will need to consult with the applicant because of privacy and human resources matters. Okay. Uh, Alderman Bout. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. If we want to take you up on that, what do we, uh, can you email? Are you comfortable email, emailing email that? Email okay. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Rebecca Tellen to be considered for appointment to the Wellness Committee to fill the unexpired term of William Adams, whose term expires 4-30-09. Need a motion to confirm? Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointments confirmed. Tracy Holton to be considered for appointment to the Group Health Insurance Committee to fill the unexpired term of Joanne Decker, whose term expires 4-30-2009. Need a motion to confirm also? Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointments confirmed. And to the Business Improvement District, Cleo Messner, Randy Schwerer, Caitlin Bratz, Greg Herring, Don Seifert, and Kim Conway. Need a motion to confirm? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointments are confirmed. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Next item on the agenda, Madam City Clerk, public forum. Thank you. First on the list this evening is Henry Capitillo.
And Henry, could you give me your home address, please? Yes, that's uh, 1619 North 38th Street, and that's the town of Sheboygan. Okay, and you will have five minutes, sir. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity to come before this council to speak on several issues that I believe are critical to the stability of the community. This last week brought even a further decline in the U.S. economy, a decline of 3.8% in the D GDP. The total loss of jobs for 2008 was 2.8 million. The stock market's losses are estimated at $7 trillion for 2008. An additional estimate loss of $7 trillion were due to the decline in the housing market. This is the reason why our Washington lawmakers and the President are pushing for a $780 billion stimulus bill, the American Recovery and Reinvestment Bill. This stimulus bill is estimated to create between three to five million jobs. The bill will include funds for infrastructure projects, funds for the states, and job creation. In this last week's State of the State Address, Governor Doyle estimated the state deficit to be between four to five billion dollars. The following day, the Office of the Budget estimated the deficit to be more like between five to seven billion dollars. Governor Doyle also stated how important it is to get people back to work. That is why he has created the Wisconsin Recovery and Reinvestment Office. He has appointed Gary Wolfer, former WE Energy CEO, and Alan Fish, UW Vice Chancellor, to head the office. It is estimated that the state of Wisconsin could receive between, four, between two to four billion dollars from the stimulus bill. Mr. Alan Fish, UW Chancellor, estimates that these funds from the stimulus bill could potentially create as much as 70 to 80,000 jobs for Wisconsin. Mr. Gary Wolfer has said that he decided to accept the appointment because people have asked him in the past why the private sector does not get more involved with helping government. You may ask, why has Governor Doyle created an office for a bill that has yet to pass the U.S. Senate? Have you heard the saying, the early bird catches the worm or it is better to be prepared? Then, then you get the idea behind the governor's actions. He knows that the state will be better off if they are ready to start funding projects as soon as the bill is passed, therefore taking advantage of the influx of federal funds and maximizing the impact of these funds on the state's economy. As I have previously stated to this council, this administration has not seriously looked at job creation, job retention, and job expansion. Just this last month, Kohler Company announced that they were going to lay off an additional 160 workers. JL French Company also announced that they are also going to be laying off 350 workers. Adding the 350 pent air jobs also being lost and other layoffs in the city, that brings a total of 900 jobs. I think that the council should follow the governor's lead and be prepared to deal with the declining revenues and future job losses. The council should consider, consider establishing a speci special committee that sole purpose is to look at job creation, job expansion, and job retention. Do not wait for, fur for further job losses. You can be better prepared to deal with the troubled economy and future potential job losses by being prepared. I believe that this committee should be comprised of private business representatives, local bankers, and council members. The establishment of this committee should be by the council and not by the mayor because he may not be in the office after this election. It is my opinion that the city of Sheboygan will feel the influx of this administration for years to come because of the mayor's committee appointments. Just look at the mayor's appointment to the Police and Fire Commission. I am sure that you all read the article in the Sheboygan Press about the email that Police and Fire Commissioner Richard Shusha sent to various individuals regarding a meeting with the mayor and the fire department union rep and Alderman Montemayor. Instead of creating such a controversy, you would think that the Commissioner Shusha would be busy trying to get the nine police officers hired that the council approved at their last meeting. I am sure that most of you also read the, art, the uh, letter that was, sent to, that was sent to Alderman Wangerman by Officer Winters regarding the understaffing of the police department. Even with the nine officers that this council approved during their last meeting, the police department will still be short nine officers. I would ask 
Commissioner Shusha and other police and fire co commissioners to make it a priority to replace all the patrol officers that are needed to be hired before looking at feeling, filling the police chief position. I would also hope that the police and fire commissioners would give the acting chief the opportunity and enough time on the job to see if he could permanently fill that position. Excuse me, Henry, would you like your additional minute? Yes. Go ahead. Another statement that the governor made was that when lawmakers work together, they can accomplish great things. I believe that this council can also accomplish great things if they also work together to make Sheboygan a good place for business to expand and thereby creating jobs. And I'm pretty sure that most of you know people that have been laid off. I was talking to a friend of mine that I've known oh, since high school. He works at a local paint company. And he said, you know what, Henry? This is the worst I've ever seen it. And I've worked at this company for 25 years. And he says, y you just can't believe what you're seeing now. And he says, it's not just our company. It's other companies in the area. And I think that uh, by looking at this and taking the initiative to actually get in contact with some of the local manufacturers in the area and not wait to find out that they're going to be laying off more workers and trying to see what can be done. Maybe you might be able to help them in some Excuse way. Excuse me, Henry. Thank you very up. much. Thank you. Next on our list would be Richard Manny. Richard, can I have your home address, please? 3822 North 12th Street, Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Your Honor, City Attorney McLean, City Clerk Richards, Council members, residents, residents watching on TV, thank you for these moments. I speak tonight on behalf of the Board of Friends of the Senior Activity Center of Sheboygan. I've served as board president since May of 2008, and I'm here to inform you about what's coming through that board and to invite you to be involved. Through the Chamnus Group from Milwaukee, we will be conducting a needs assessment survey as we move ahead in our plans for the future of the Senior Activity Center. So, some words of background first before I formalize that invitation to be involved. <clears throat> Over three years ago, the Commission on Aging, in looking at itself, decided that we needed to be proactive and make some, uh, some progress and make some improvement. And they invited the friends to hire a consultant, and the friends agreed and paid for Boris Frank to come and be with us for over eight months. In that time, we put together a report and found out much about ourselves and did some organizational development work that was productive. Over two years ago, Boris stood at this podium and basically summarized his findings about the city, our seniors, and the activity of the center. He said, seniors in Sheboygan are underserved. He said, the center itself is an inadequate facility, that many towns of half or third our size have a center with twice the number of square feet. He said the staff is stressed to the point of breaking because they work extensively with limited resources. And he said the city lacks the will or the ability to adequately fund for senior center activities. As a result of his work with us, the commission made a decision to move ahead aggressively in building for its future by spending no further dollars but building program through the use of volunteers who would offer their abilities and time for the sake of the seniors in Sheboygan. Since then, the senior has grown markedly in program offerings and numbers of people involved. <clears throat> and Wendy Schmitz, the director of the center, will be telling you about that in a port to, to be given in the near future. So I'll bore you with details in that capacity. The second thing that we got active about was the Friends Organization. It had diminished in number to 12. 
In the last 15 months, we've reactivated the Friends Board, so it's no, lo no longer a caretaker board over its endowment dollars, but it's a proactive board that's moving ahead to make the Senior Center what it might be. We've reorganized, re-energized, and redirected ourselves. And I'm proud of the people on the board and of the significance of what that board has been about and what we're attempting to do. A long-range planning committee has met for the last six months. As a consequence of their work and evaluation, we have contracted with the Chamness Group from Milwaukee to conduct a needs assessment survey for us. To make that successful, we need your involvement in that survey. It will perform 35 individual interviews with key leaders across the face of our greater community. It will structure three forums, numbering 40 to 60 people each, and that will include people from across a broad range of perspective in our community. And we will have a hands-on survey in hard copy and available by email through which we can invite all of you personally to be involved in giving us feedback and information. We have a vision about that center's future. That vision reflects national trends. Things are changing. Not only are we growing in numbers of our seniors, I'm one of those, I'm now 60, but we know that that senior population is healthier, wealthier, and retiring earlier than our parents' generation. The future of senior centers reflects incredible things all around the nation I won't go into detail about tonight, but they're things that you've never considered before that are possible and feasible for Sheboygan as they are in other parts of the country. Excuse me, Richard, would you like your additional one minute? I do. Go ahead. So, we want you to be involved. Corporate leaders, please say yes, I'll interview. I'll respond, I'll take 20 minutes and talk to a Chamness Group representative. Business leaders, social service agency leaders, people with perspective on your constituencies, say yes and come to a forum in March on the 10th or 12th. You'll be getting an invitation. And then the rest of us personally, please, jump online, city website, simple connection, give us your feedback be involved in the survey. With all of that, the future is great. The center represents volunteerism, which extends our dollars spent many times over. It's the very best of government. And we have a future that is as significant as is the generation coming up. In all the time we have, not me, <laughs> all the energy we have, all the background and ability, thank you. Be involved. Right on the dot, thank you. And last would be Jeff Shuko. Jeff, can I have your home address, please? 2411 Camelot Boulevard, Sheboygan. OK, and you will have five minutes. Thank you, Mayor Perez, Attorney McLean, Mrs. Richards, council members, and citizens here at, at, and at home. I also appreciate this opportunity to speak before you. And I wanted to just uh, comment, uh, throw a comment uh, to your way, Your Honor. I, I have noticed, and I haven't spoken to you for some time now, but I have noticed over these past couple of years that we did manage to build a police station and fund it. We also managed to reduce property taxes along with your help from the council. And uh, those were promises I remember being made, pledges being made. and. And they were kept. Are you sure you're a politician? <laughs> this is refreshing. <laughs> At any rate, uh, that brings to mind why I wanted to appear here tonight also, because we are in very serious financial difficulties now, and a lot of jobs are being lost. And I've been watching what's been going on with our Blue Harbor development, a lot of good work being done. Uh, it seems like well, these things do take time, but some of the extra events that have been added down there help. However, a lot of the businesses are really struggling. I haven't seen the Edson pull up here yet and, and get docked here. 
the Aerospace Museum. I have met with Mr. Testweed and he showed us that facility and their progress so far. And through a remote control flying club that I belong to, we're not only gonna continue doing volunteer work for the Rockets for Schools program, but we're also gonna do flight demonstrations for the museum now. I think it'd be a great if the city citizens, council members, everybody would maybe redouble our efforts in getting some of those projects going down there. And I did notice uh, some major expenditures now going on with, uh, say for instance, joint dispatch, $2 million for that. I think that's a great idea, I really do. In the long run, it's gonna benefit everyone. Uh, I also noticed a million dollars being spent I believe possibly for backup dispatch at the police department. And I thought, hey, wait a minute, the Edson in Windsor offered the bridge of that ship for use in emergencies. Why don't we take some of that funding and get that ship up here and we'll put the backup dispatch right on the armor plated bulletproof glass bridge like they offered. It may save us some money and besides that, the money's being spent dual purpose then to really kick our tourism in gear. It's just a thought. Aside from that, uh, I did keep track of, and I do represent my company, which is Great Lakes Avian Pest Control, just so everybody knows up front, I'm biased. But uh, we did monitor the abatement program that was enlisted down at Kiwanis Park last year. And I, at the fall of the year, I got complaints from parents saying that it wasn't any better. And I, but we did monitor their program. I believe the Goose Police out of Ohio or somewhere were called in. And uh, I could see from the very beginning that this wasn't gonna work. It was kind of a waste of money. But I also wanted to let you folks, everyone know that there's a solution that can be employed. I could probably spend twice the amount of time down there that the Goose Police did for the city here. And I don't blame the city for going to someone that's established because that's oftentimes smart business too. But I wanted to let everyone know that since then we have taken our abatement programs to other communities and the city of Kiwani being one, being one community where the parks, their, their, their frying areas, their boardwalks, everything's been cleared out. Their beachfront, their marina, their riverfront, the whole works. And what their public works department found is that they're saving so much money that the abatement program is more than paid for itself. I also turned in a listing of uh, a number of businesses that have a concern here with having to hire firms like me now to do migratory bird abatement on their roofs and facilities, especially where the FDA is involved. They don't take kindly to that sort of contamination. It's costing these businesses a considerable amount of money, businesses that we need to keep and I just, uh, I had been told by a, a couple of these businesses which belong to the Sheboygan County Area Chamber of Commerce that they would like me to make up a petition, they'd be willing to sign. So I did that and I turned that over to the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce so perhaps the council and the Chamber of Commerce could look into a solution. And I just wanted to make mention of that, that there are options. People weren't happy with what had happened down there. It is a very unhealthy situation. Uh, that I can testify to. And I wanted to just let people know that there are alternatives. And uh, that's all I have for this evening. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Jeff. That's it. <clears throat> We will proceed, thank you, uh, those who addressed the council tonight. Next item on the agenda is a public hearing. It's a hearing regarding the report of assessment for improvements for repaving of Indiana Avenue from South 14th Street to South 17th Street. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to address the council? Ma'am, please. Can I just stand up? You, that's okay, go ahead. Excuse me, ma'am, could I, before you start, could you just give me your name, please? Donna Jackich. Donna Jackich. He's going to want me to use my maiden name if I get, get in trouble tonight. But, um, and, Donna okay, and Donna, what is your address? Um, well, we now live at 5424 Timberline Lane. Timberline? Okay. Timberline. Okay. All right, go ahead. I'm not all polished on this like all the other speakers have been, but I'm just concerned about 
When this was approached on Indiana Avenue, they said it would take exactly two months. And Fuzzy and I both said, oh, that's, that's fine. We can get through that. We won't get our summer months. Now we go to a meeting a week ago, and they tell us they're going to take the whole summer to do three blocks. And I'm concerned as to who made that decision. When you offer up something as a bid for a job, don't you get take the lowest bid on something like this? I mean, why can't it be done in two months like they promised in the beginning? It's taken, the business has been rough going because of the economy and everything, and even now we're starting to get above, I'm not supposed to be telling this, get above board, and now it's coming down that we're going to be charged $12,000. I really don't mind the fact that the, the city wants us to pay for the, uh, the road to be done, but why can't they help accommodate, especially businesses like ours, such as um, they give us one lane to get in, how is the semi to get back out? How are you, I don't understand how you people plan this. Can't you, are, isn't it a law that you have to give us access to our business? Is it? Who answers that? I don't know if you answer questions today. No, this is a, we, we can get those questions answered for you though oh, to, okay. tomorrow, okay? Uh, I will uh, personally have somebody call you tomorrow and talk to you about those issues, okay? I'm going to the day off, Mayor. <laughs> How about how about Wednesday? Wednesday would be just fine. better yet. Ryan, <laughs> please make a note of that, Ryan. Wednesday. Okay. Thank you. At the bakery. Now wait a minute. Um, okay, the time frame in the month. That's all that I wanted to say today. Okay. And thank you for listening to me. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to address the council on the hearing on the assessments? Is there anyone else? I have a would you please come up there? Thank you. Can I have your name, please, ma'am? Jane Donath. And it's D O N A T H. I'm sorry, D O N A T H. A T H. And your address, Jane? 1421 Indiana Avenue. Okay, go ahead. Um, there was a letter in the editor in the Sheboygan Press yesterday, and I don't know if everybody's seen it, or maybe some did, but I'd like to read it. Um, after receiving a letter from the city of Sheboygan recently, I felt compelled to let the citizens of Sheboygan know how a certain ordinance affects me as well as any other residences and businesses along Indiana Avenue between 14th Street and 17th Street and how it may affect any of you who live in older neighborhoods in the future. As I am sure anyone knows who has traveled Indiana Avenue this past winter, there is a big upgrading being done to the sewers, utilities, street sidewalks, and so on. Those of us who live here have had to put up with a lot of inconvenience as well as a huge mess the entire winter, and it is to continue into the summer months as well. Now the city wants to charge me and the rest of the residents and businesses an assessment for this work that is being done. This is in accordance with student ordinance which has been on the books for some time which was instituted by the Common Council and enforced by the City Development and Planning. For me, the cost will be up to $5,000. I happen to be a widow on Social Security and working a part-time job to keep my head above water because I have to in this economy. I live in a 100-year-old house. I drive a 14-year-old car. Now the city is going to make me help pay for an upgrade to its streets at a time when the economy is worse than any time since the Great Depression. The residents are not the only people who use these streets. Residents should not have to pay for public works projects. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Sir? Yes. Good evening. Uh, good evening, sir. Can I have your name? Valeriano Gonzalez. Okay. And what is your address, sir? 1525 Indiana Avenue. Indiana Avenue. Okay, go ahead. Yes, uh, I got uh, only like that. To, excuse me for my English. I'm, I'm bilingual, and sometimes my English doesn't come, come out too good. Uh, 
Seven years ago, uh, my sewer lines broke in the middle of the road, and it cost me $4,000. Uh, it wasn't my fault, but I think it was part of the, maybe the city's fault, but not advising people that goes with heavy trucks through Indiana Avenue, because when they first built that road, they said there were no blueprints. When they built, they went, I think, by what they could see. And they said the uh, main water line too close to the sewer lines. That by all those heavy trucks that travel through there, especially like semites that go through color from color to Sheboygan, plus all those heavy loads that went through there to carry the stones and rocks to the marina when it was built, they were the ones that caused more damage to that sewer line that I had to pay for, and I wasn't helped by the city. I had to pay all out of, out of my pocket. Now, seven years later, uh, I had, uh, now they want me to pay again another close to 4000 to rebuild the same thing that was fixed before. When I'm already going on 11 years that I've been uh, disabled, not able to work, my, my wife got a job, but uh, she worked for, you, you know, minimum wages. That doesn't amount to much. How am I going to do to pay? Uh, I asked the, the, the other day that we had a meeting uh, with this fellow friend, and he said the city borrowed the money at 7%, but how am I going to pay it back? I still owe $500 out of those 4000 that I first borrowed. How am I going to be able to pay that? That's, that's my question. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Is there anyone else? Mr. Valimano, please, but he doesn't speak English at all. He, he got uh, something to say to me. Puedo, puedo hacer el atento, uh, uh, traducir? Pásale para adentro, por favor. Usted lo traduce The gentleman would like to address the council regarding the public here. He's not able to speak English. Uh, gentleman here will do translation. Or him and I will. Could I please have the gentleman's address? Maurilio Bañuelos. Maurilio qué? Maurilio Bañuelos. Maurilio Brown. Maurilio, Maurilio Bañuelos. Bañuelos? Explíqueselos. Bañuelos. Oh, Bañuelos. B. B-O-N-N. B-O-N-N. Okay. Ahí le hacen. La edición. 1510 Indiana. 1510 Indiana. OK, go ahead. Mi pregunta es que eh, yo ya no trabajo, estoy en un ingreso muy bajito, muy en cambio, es tu lo. Y yo se puede la house there. Y costa me más de seven thousand dollars. There's no way to pay seven thousand dollars. He's uh, he's unemployed because he's retired. He's retired and he said he doesn't have the money. What he gets from social security is, is very small amount. He and uh, he won't be able to pay. Yes, too low. My 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 income is only eight hundred and seventy a month. He can pay seven thousand dollars. Okay. Okay. Su esposa. Su esposa la tiene en el norte. My wife is in the nursing home. This is quien que el pedido. El nursing home is very condition now. My wife, yes. Okay. okay. Everybody understand it, what he said? Okay. Thank you. Gracias, señor. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? Before I ask for a motion to close here, and I would just like to point out that uh, this is another instance of where we've we've had people come before the council and pretty much testify of the, the hardships. And the, the ordinance has been in place for a long time. Uh, it's been applied fairly and equitably uh, uh, amongst all. Uh, every time it has been, uh, people haven't been happy. 
the streets have been repaired. It may be time to revisit this particular ordinance, if nothing else, to just have a good candid discussion. Uh, times have changed, the economy has changed, uh, the people living in, living in these neighborhoods are, are, aren't young people. Uh, as you've heard, some of these people uh, are just not only physically, but financially just unable to pay. That's all there is to it. Uh, I would urge, uh, suggest and urge Alderman Meyer to perhaps put that item on the agenda for discussion. Alderman Kittleson, you may want to initiate some of those discussions. If nothing else, let's hear people out more and bring the issue up uh, forward. If nothing can be done, then nothing can be done. But uh, hopefully there will be good discussions. Yes, Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I just would like to say I did attend the hearing. Uh, Ryan was there. He gave an excellent presentation on it. And, and we there were at least 25, 30 people were, were there. And, and I just want the citizens to know that, that we are concerned for them and, and that we are a resource and, and a listening ear. And we would like to try to do everything that we can to help them. And you know I mean that sincerely. And if we can put that issue on the public works agenda, let's, let's work together to to see what we can do to come up to uh, to help our citizens, absolutely. So thank you. Thank you. Alderman Wangaman. Thank you, Your Honor. In fact, uh, the lady that read the letter is the one that called me at home. And uh, there's a great deal of concern on Indiana Avenue for the people. Uh, we're in a really a rough time here. We're looking at a different era. And I had a long conversation with Alderman Gisha about this before the meeting already. And uh, we're going to do some investigating and looking into this, too, to see just what can be done. Uh, because there are true hardships out there. We've got good people who uh, can't uh, pay. And uh, this is a difficult situation. And I think the city has to step forward and try to help them and do something for them. Uh, in fact, uh, even the uh, interest that the city charges, I think, is in question. And we should take a look at that, and maybe extended payments or something. We've, we've got to do something to help these people. And uh, I believe it's, this ordinance has been in the book somewhere around 30 years. And there are cities that don't do this. My, uh, after I remarried, after my wife's passing away, my wife came from California and she said, oh, they don't do it that way. They spread it across the entire tax base and they feel it's much more equitable. Not long ago, I had a good friend of mine who lives up on uh, North 7th Street near Memorial Hospital. And he's an elderly gentleman. And they did a complete revamp up there. And he was hit very hard with this bill. And so are some of the other people. So I think it's time that, and especially in these hard times, uh, and I think everybody agrees it's not going to pass away today. They're going to be with us for a couple of years. And there's something the city has got to do to look at these people and uh, see if we can't help them in some way. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Owen. Well, and it oh, will be not just this neighborhood, but future neighborhoods that perhaps compel us to revisit this particular issue and look to see if what the ordinance calls for now is, is indeed fair given the times, uh, the serious times that we're in right now. Uh, I would urge that uh, the uh, other members of the council who, who are, are concerned to also work with the Public Works Committee to at least initiate the discussions and then take it uh, to another level from there. Thank you very much. Appreciate your input. I need a motion to close hearings. All present hand. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Motion and second to close the hearing. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Consent agenda 21-1 to 21-14. President Hanna. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'd move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file and all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Foran? Aye. Falk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. And Wangaman? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions, 2115 through 2119, to be referred. Report of officers 2, 2120 by the city clerk. Submitted in compliance with resolution number 220809, the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force wishes to report on its activity thus far. Alderman Clayunas, any motion to accept and file? Mr. Honor, I move to accept and file the report. Second. Motion and second. 
I would like to uh, thank Alma Cleunas for the hard work she has thank been you. doing. The uh, report is very thank good. You very thank you so much. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 21 21 through 2131 to be referred. 2132 to 2133 lies over, and those are resolutions introduced three. 2134 through 2136 to be referred. Report of committee four, 2137 by salary and grievances, recommending creating subsection D of section 2996 of the 1975 Sheboygan Municipal Code, establishing the annual salary for the interim police chief and passing the attached ordinance. First reading, Alma Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I ask for suspension. Second. There's a motion and a second to suspend. Is there any objection? I would imagine the rationale is because Chief Eirig needs to get paid. At some yes. point, we need to decide where we're going to Exactly. Pay him. He's been waiting for a check, I believe. Okay. Does that uh, suffice? Okay. Please proceed. I move that the RC be accepted and filed and the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Falk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Montemayor? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2138 by salary and grievances, recommending, accepting, and adopting the tentative agreements to the 2007 2009 contract between the City of Sheboygan and the IAFF Local 483 firefighters and passing the attached resolution. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the RC be accepted and filed and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Alderman Rindfleisch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I see that the agreements is from 2007 to 2009. Uh, I guess uh, we just asked for a, um, a briefing on what changes to the tentative agreements are that uh, we're looking at. So we're two years into this agreement. What are we doing for the last years? All I'm looking for explanation. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, Luckily, this is a, something that won't cost us any money. Um, two things. The firefighters will now be asking for their vacations by seniority, and we're going to add another cycle of vacation time so that it can be spread out a bit more. So it's two good things and doesn't cost anything. Thank you. Anything else? There is none. Please call the roll. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Bauk? Aye. 13 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. Report of Committee 6 by 2139 by law and licensing recommending denying taxi cab, res taxi cab driver's license application number 8114 based upon the applicant's failure to include all relevant convictions on the taxi cab driver's license application, failure to cooperate with the committee, and the record of violations related to the licensed activity. Alderman, um, where are you here? Wangaman. Thank you. I, I uh, move that the report of the uh, committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Uh, under discussion, Your Honor, is uh, Craig Felton in the chamber tonight? He's not here, Your Honor. Thank you. Please proceed. Uh, Mr. Felton had uh, applied for a taxi cab driver's license, but uh, in his application, he neglected to include uh, approximately 17 different violations that he was uh, apparently forgot or whatever. And uh, he was invited to attend our committee twice. The last time by registered letter, he did not respond. Uh, the committee then uh, voted unanimously to deny the license. Thank you, Alderman Wiley. Any other discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Gisha. Aye. Hannah? 
Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Quayunist? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. And Decker? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2140 by law and licensing. Recommending denying beverage operators license number 2263 based on the applicant's oral withdrawal of the beverage operator's license application. Alderman Wagman. I, I move the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Motion second. and second under discussion. Under discussion, uh, the uh, applicant, Kelly uh, Villard, called me at home and said that she wished to withdraw her application uh, due to the fact that she uh, no longer was going to be uh, employed in such a manner that she would need the license. Uh, the city attorney recommended that we go through a formal denial procedure to officially remove the document from the uh, system. And the committee voted uh, unanimously to uh, deny the license. Very well, thank you. Any other uh, discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Gesha? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Report of Committee 7, 2141 by Public Protection and Safety recommending referral of the Deer Management Survey to the full Common Council for discussion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, our committee, <clears throat> I'd recommend uh, that the report of committee be uh, forwarded to, uh, oh, I would hope we get forwarded to the uh, committee of the whole. I think we just accept discussion. and adopt it, and then it'll be on the yeah, Should I accept and adopt it? Is that what you want? Well, I think if you're going to refer it, let's just refer it on to the whole meeting. My preference would be, because I think the public would like a, another forum to discuss the issue, and I think the committee of the whole would be appropriate. So just would a motion please to make refer? A yeah, so I'll make a motion to refer the, uh, the findings to the committee of the whole. Second. Motion and second. Mm -hmm. Under discussion. All one vote. Thank you, Your Honor. Just I would ask uh, President Hanna uh, about the time urgency. We have a topic for the next, uh, for the next uh, committee of the whole meeting being the pay plan, uh, while Alderman Verhassel is still part of the uh, part of the council. So what's the uh, the urgency? I think if you could do it the next, the next time. So uh, in early know. March? Yeah. Early okay. March. Very good. Thank you, sir. Okay, we have a misunderstanding here. You were saying to the committee of the whole, here you're saying full council. Yes. Sir. Two different things. I know, and I'm asking, can, can I refer to the committee of the whole from here rather than the full council? Yes, you can. All you need to do is that That's motion. Right. I thought I had said that, but no. No. Pardon me? Yeah, just put in a motion. That's what he did. Okay. Yeah. All right. And the second included that. Okay. Anything else? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2142 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license application number 8125 based upon the applicant's failure to include all relevant convictions on the license application and the record of violations related to the license activity. Alderman Wagman. Thank you, uh, I make a motion the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Uh, under discussion is uh, Chris Schutte in the chamber tonight. Mr. Schutte is not uh, present. Very uh, well. Please continue. Again, there were violations that were not included in his application, and they had uh, direct relation to the uh, license activity. The committee was concerned at these violations among underage alcohol possession of marijuana, disorderly conduct, et cetera. And uh, the, uh, after discussion, the committee voted unanimously to deny the application. Thank you, Alderman Wagaman. Any more discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Decker, Aye. Gisha, Aye. and Hannah. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2143 has been withdrawn. Ordinance is introduced 10. 2144 will lie over. 2147 through 21, 2145 through 2147 will be referred. Matters laid over 11. 
2049, resolution number 18909-0809 by Alderman Gisha, Clayunas, Born, and Montemayor, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget, establishing, excuse me, appropriation for police department vacation and sick leave severance payments. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Motion and second. Under discussion. Um, I just did notice on the document, it looks like it's a resolution instead of a report of committee. I know I didn't want to say anything, but uh, it's a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. And the second included that? Second, yes. Second. Okay. Under discussion, if any. There is none. Please call the roll. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Excuse me? Aye. Thank you. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2050, resolution number 190809 by Alderman Gisha, Clayunas, Boren, and Montemayor, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2009 budget establishing appropriation for contractual engineering services for Sheboygan Inner Harbor. Omigisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah Aye. and Heideman. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2047, General Ordinance Number 750809 by Alderman Montemayor, Sarek, Meyer, Decker, and Verhassel amending the municipal code so as to include changes to the Department of Public Works table of organization to add janitor and to change the job description of janitor. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, when this was at the council meeting a couple weeks ago, there were some questions on which union these uh, individuals are going to be under. I noticed it's 1564, AFSCME City Hall Union. And I guess the question was a couple of weeks ago is uh, who are going to be able to bid on these jobs for these janitor jobs? And I just need a clarification on that of whether it's whether the uh, existing city hall unions uh, people are going to be able to bid on those jobs out of the police department or, or who's going to be eligible or who isn't going to be eligible. Alderman are you able to answer who will be able, eligible to apply? I think Mr. Bittner will have a better answer than I will. Bill, is he here? Please come up. With regard to uh, the two units involved, they have dramatic, dramatically different hiring practices. Um, one basically requires we hire, hire the senior individual uh, that is qualified. In other words, not the most qualified, but uh, uh, the other one, uh, the, the city hall union, the 1564, basically says that anybody in the existing unit will be given consideration for the job. It doesn't guarantee uh, that they would get the job. It's one of the sort of preferred ways the city hall is much more flexible in hiring. Um, the people guaranteed a look are those people in the existing city hall unit. Uh, anyone else hired from within the city ranks or not has sort of looked like a new employee into that unit, if that, may, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Needless to say, under any arrangement here, we're talking about keeping all the jobs in-house because we have more people than jobs right now. So uh, it's just a matter of how, how those people get transferred. Okay, hold, hold on, Bill. For, for Bill? Yes, thank yeah. you. Uh -huh. uh, Bill, if, if the individuals hired into the City Hall Union came from Public Works, would they lose their seniority from Public Works in moving to the new union? In theory, um, it's like taking a job somewhere else. Yeah. They lost their job in Public Works, it's like taking a job somewhere else. But all the people in Public Works are, ta are, are taking 
alternative jobs under duress, so they have rights to come back to their existing jobs that wouldn't terminate. If, if that, in other words, I believe it's three years or something like that. If, if, if you were to be laid off from city and not have a job, you have a right to come back to the public work unit over a three-year period or recall when, when a new job is created. Uh, our, our early discussions on that is anybody who would who would take another job because uh, the budget had eliminated their existing job would be put in that category. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bill. We have a motion to put the ordinance upon its passage. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'm going to vote against this, not because it's just simply a change in the TO and working out the arrangement with the units, but to draw attention to the fact that this, these two employees were employees that originally in the budget we had set aside to possibly go out for contract services to the tune of $130,000 for two janitors in the police department. In reading the job description for $130,000, sweeps, mops, and buffs floors furnishing hardwood surface floors, dusts and polished furniture, cleans washrooms, collects waste, makes inspections, washes windows, checks low pressure, cuts lawns, performs minor maintenance. We could have taken the same money, we could have gone out for bid, done an RFP, we could have employed several people in this community for $130,000 instead of two for the reasons previously stated in this council, it's not my money, this 130000 It's the citizens' money. And I think we would have been better served going out to private sector, having a janitorial service for $130,000 to empty waste paper baskets for two individuals is just something I can't stomach. And I think the citizens can't stomach it. And for that reason, I won't be voting for this. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'll echo Alderman Gish's sentiments. Uh, it's not the work itself. This is important work that needs to be done. The city needs this work done in order to function. The police department needs this work done. But the Finance Committee voted to uh, hold some of the budget money aside so we could just ask the question. So we could ask, uh, can we get a better deal by going outside and getting a janitorial service? And it was the will of, of, of certain people that said, we can't even wait and ask that question. We're going to take that money and we're going to put it in. Uh, so I, I too, uh, am going to vote against this on the principle that for $130,000 in the world that I live in, in the commercial world as an employer, I could do an awful lot for $130,000. Um, and it, we're way overpaying, is in my opinion. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. There is no other discussion. Please call the roll. Clayunas. Yes. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. No. Excuse me? No. Thank you. Ryan? No. I'm sorry? No. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? No. Bourne? No. Bauk? No. Decker? Aye. Gisha? No. Hannah? No. Heidemann? No. Kittleson? Aye. Six eyes, eight no's. Motion fails. 2048, General Ordinance Number 760809 by Alban Montemayor, Zurich, Meyer, Decker, and Verhassel, amending the municipal code so as to include change to the City Hall Department's Assessor's Department Table of Organization so as to make the current Assessment Secretary Clerk the Assessment <coughs> Technician. Alban Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the ordinance be put upon its passage. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Clayunas? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law 2148 will go to finance. 2149 will go to finance two. Other matters, Attorney McLean. 2150 is a communication from Carter Paulus along with an article from the Journal Sentinel 
Report critical of Wisconsin officials spending decisions dated February 1, 2009. That will be referred to uh, finance. <laughs> 2151 is a communication from Chuck Bure stating his concern about the lack of snow removal from parking lanes in the city, more specifically North 14th Street from New Jersey all the way to Richardson Brothers Lumber. And that will be referred to Public Works. 2152 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2009 and June 30, 2010. And that will go to law and licensing. Okay, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Stand adjourned.